Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This video is going to be the first in response to getting your feedback on what to do next. But the last video I shared, I had some bits and pieces left over and I promised myself that before I moved on to the next project, I would finish up those bits and pieces. And some of them you've already seen and I'm not going to pull them out and show them, but just rest assured I met my challenge basically. Everything that was sitting on my desk has been made into something that can be used somewhere else in my journal. So those are all here. And then I got a package from Amazon and it was really cool and I put it on my desk and then I groaned because I realized I had promised myself anything on my desk that was usable would get made into something before I started this next project. So I had this really cool packaging. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see through there. It's an Amazon packaging and um, I think some origami paper. I do an art club at lunch with some with students and I had ordered them some origami paper and that was on my desk so I'm like ah oh, darn. So I made this cover, this journal cover and it's just obviously just the outside not the inside but I used that Amazon packaging. It's really cool because it's got these perforation lines so it's super easy to fold and it's kind of grungy. I haven't inked it up yet or anything. And then I just used a wide piece of lace for the spine. So I've got the outside of a cover. You know, I'll obviously put some more on there, but but it's essentially done and ready to go. I can decorate it however, however I want. I can turn it. I could even put this on the front if I wanted to, right? hadn't intended that. Maybe I shouldn't put it upside down, but I can do something along these lines. And then there's a journal cover. So there, there's that. Um, Mass Make March will start Friday. I'm going to do it a little differently than next last year. I will not do a video every day. That's just not possible with my school and work schedule. But I will do some things that I find super helpful for mass makes. Now I know there's a lot of people like Rachel at Roxy Creations and such that do mass makes all the time and it's not my normal thing. But I do have some ideas and such like the first video. I'm hoping I can do it on Friday. The first video will be notepads because that's something I use frequently and maybe we'll do a variety of notepads like this particular notepad is literally just a notepad with some paper at the top or it could be washi or it could be lace or ribbon or trim or what have you. That kind of a notepad. Um, this kind of a notepad just scraps and, and a fold over but again it's just a notepad to stick inside a journal. Maybe we'll do some scrappy notepads that are a variety of different papers that you can tear apart. Sorry about that if I'm out of frame. That you can tear off and use in on the pages of your journal. So like I would tuck this into a belly band or something and then when I was ready to write on my page or to finish decorating it after I'd written on it, I could tear a bit of this off and another piece from a from a folio and tuck it onto the page. So that kind of a scrap paper bit. Um, maybe these. These you've seen in many of my journals and I use these all the time. I'll use a thin belly band and I'll tuck this on. But these have, um, so they're scrap pads again with scraps of cardstock and copy paper or whatever paper is available. And then they've been stamped on and then a flower sticker. It doesn't have to be a flower sticker, of course it can be anything. But a sticker on the top just to decorate that first page of the notepad to make it just a little bit more interesting. But they are all notepads. So we're going to do some of these kinds of things and then here's a notepad that's just a slight bit different. So we're going to do some of those kinds of things with notepads. That is my hope for my first, whoops, I forgot to put powder on the back of those stickers. But that's the first mass make is going to be, oh here we go, more scrap pads notepads and that will hopefully be on Friday, March 1st. So Mass Make March. I know Margaret at Seven Plaza said that she is going to do a Mass Make March um, and I don't know, I haven't heard yet because I haven't watched um, the videos like I'd hoped to, but she's going to do something for Mass Make March and Tracy Fox will do something for Mass Make March, maybe a video a week or something. And I believe her group, her Facebook group, Tracy Fox Creative, there's going to be some kind of a swap there. I don't know any of the details yet, but I believe that's going to happen. So Mass Make March is going to be a thing. Before I show you how to do the file folder. Okay, so when I shared that video of what do you want to see next, overwhelmingly 
people wanted to see one sheet wonders and I have a plethora of one sheet wonders and so I thought okay if I'm going to show one sheet wonders I want to show it in a way that give people options now almost across the board my one sheet wonders are 12 by 12 pieces of paper whether that's cardstock or pattern paper or what have you they're 12 by 12 pieces of paper and they are folded to follow a formula basically and I wanted them to be able to all be the same size so that if I chose to make an entire journal of one sheet wonders I could well obviously my spine got fat and I only put a portion of them in there and as I was making the videos so I put the one sheet wonders in I sewed them into the signature and then I used some sheet protector to put the prototype that I used to teach the lesson in there. And so I started and then I stopped. So my biggest challenge at this point is, so I've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five, those five different one sheet wonders, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so there's 18 different types. One of them is a different height. That was one of my first one sheet wonders, but all the rest are designed to be the same height. So I have to figure out which of the one sheet wonders I'm gonna start with. And the way these are designed or the way I intend to use them I'll just use this one as an example. I want the one sheet wonders for the viewers, for your sake. You can make it exactly like this and then put ephemera and notepads and like here's a pocket here, here's a pocket here, there's a pocket on the inside, there's journal pages in this one. So this could be like a mini journal, there's a pocket here, um, there's a pocket on the back. So this is a one sheet wonder that has, that can also be used like a gift. You can fill it with ephemera or make it a mini journal and send it to a friend. So I want it to be able to be used that way. But I also want these to be able to be used as a part of a signature inside of a journal. For those of you who are new, a signature are the pages that go inside of your journal. In this case, I have, so this would be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine signature journal. And my signatures are not often standard because a lot of times I'll do one piece or two or three pieces as a signature, whereas many people do several pieces as a signature. But because of the nature of this journal, it needed to be less pages per signature. So all of these are designed to also be able to include inside of a signature in your journal. So they'll du be dual purpose. Now, because of that, and because of the dimensions that I made, I think these are four and three quarters. All of these, no, five and five and a half. I'm sorry, I was wrong. These are all going to be five and a half inches tall. Of course, you can change measurements, but that would get really complicated with this many one sheet wonders. So they're gonna all be five and a half inches tall and four inches wide. That'll work for most journals. If you make bigger journals, longer journals, that'll work just fine because a lot of times we like to vary our pages or the sizes of the pages in the signature in a journal. So that'll work just fine. If you work in a smaller journal, the measurements won't work, not for this particular project. You can do what I did and make a journal of one sheet wonders. You obviously wouldn't need to have so I put them all in and then I made a page to put the, the prototypes or the teaching ones in. You could just do an entire journal of one sheet wonders. It would, I mean, with all of these, it would need to be a larger spine because by their nature, these one sheet wonders get pretty chubby pretty fast. So that is my intent. And what I'm going to do is show you a sample, you know, like this basically, that can be used as a standalone to send out to somebody or just as a mini journal in and of itself. But I'm also going to show you how you can put it inside of a, a, a signature of a journal. And that's the next piece. So I am going to do, one of the journals that you said you wanted to see was the, the wildflower journal I shared, I don't know, maybe two years old or so ago. Um, it was a file folder journal. 
And you don't have to have file folder to do it. You can use 12 by 12 paper. You can use your own collage paper. Um, or again, you can use file folder. So I'm going to give you the dimensions for that. And I'm going to show you how to assemble that. So today's video is essentially going to be how to do the file folder style journal. Now, my last one was a wildflower journal. This one is, I don't even know what this is going to be, honestly, what, what theme this is going to be. Um, it's more of like lent itself to playing cards like spades and diamonds because some of these pieces are from Stamperia's Alice in Wonderland. So I honestly don't really have a theme for this particular one. That's not the important piece. You can make it any theme you want. In fact, for Mass Make March, some of the pieces I make will be to put inside this journal and others are going to be for a daffodil journal. I've been planning daffodil journals for several years and I've not done it. So part of Mass Make March will be for that, just as a side note. So for this particular journal, today I am going to focus on the assembling of the cover because you know, the chicken or the egg, which came first. Sometimes I'll make a journal building the cover first because I want to be intentional about the cover and the purpose of the cover, and it'll determine how many signatures I put in and how wide those signatures are. Other times my focus is more on what's going inside the journal. So I'll do the signatures first and then I'll build the cover around it. You know, there's there's not a right way, basically. You do, do what works for you. But in this particular instance, I am going to build the cover first, and then we'll do the signatures and put the pages in afterward. Okay, I've got dimensions here. Um, they don't have to be these dimensions. You can certainly use something bigger or smaller. But this is what I've used for this, based on this was a scrap piece of ephemera that I made and I, as I was making it, as I was finishing it, I realized, you know, this is more than just a card. This would make a really cool cover and then it kind of transitioned into this piece. If you want to make it bigger, make it bigger. If you want to make it smaller, make it smaller. It's, it's the how to, not the dimensions on this. The difference being for these one sheet wonders, they will fit in here exactly as they are. So you can see this is five and three quarters. This is five and a half. Okay. So these one sheet wonders will fit inside this journal. So 12 by 12 one sheet wonders will fit inside. If you're wanting your one sheet wonders to go inside this particular journal, use the sizes that I give here. If, if not, then you can alter them as needed. But I wanted to make that clear. If you are wanting to put your one sheet wonders inside this journal, or even just a couple of the one sheet wonders inside this journal, make sure you use at least the height that I'm giving you. You can certainly make it taller. You can certainly make it wider, but don't make it any smaller if you want those to fit. Okay. Talkity talk, Corey. You do that a lot. Okay. 12 by 12 sheets and I'm going to grab some paper and cut to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Then I'll put this together so you can see the pieces. No, I am going to do it like this. So this is what I call a five piece cover. This is the front and the inside. This is one of the pieces. This is the back spine and I left myself two options with the back spine two different colors of paper because I didn't know what I wanted. This is the inside where I'm going to sew in the signatures. I s tend to sew in the signatures and then insert it in my journal, just a preference. And because of, this is just a piece of cardstock, and because of wanting stability, before I sew that in, I'm going to use a piece of Tyvek. This is just a scrap piece of envelope, tie, which is made of Tyvek. And I am going to glue Tyvek on to the back of this so that it's stronger. So that when I sew my signatures in, I know they're going to stay put. They're not going to tear out. So I am going to use Tyvek. You can use an envelope. You can use fabric. You can use anything you want, but you do want some kind of a stabilizer. Just this cardstock will tear way too easily if it's not reinforced somehow. So this is my front and inside. This is my back and inside. 
Okay, so it's going to go like this. These are my front and inside, back and inside. So you can imagine if these were a file folder where there's a fold in it, this would be the fold of your file folder and this would go down. This would be the fold of your file folder, right? I know it's hard to see because it's black, which is why I got a different color for the sample. And it's going to go down. So one, two, and then the spine cover. This is going to go on the outside of the spine, so that's piece three. The inside of the spine, so that's piece four. And then the base, for want of a better word, and that's piece five. So this is going to have five separate pieces, and I'll show you how they are going to work. I'll do a quick assembly. So this is the base piece. When, I'm, when it's all said and done, I'm going to take the piece where I've sewn my signature and attach it in here. And I'll show you a little trick that I do with that. And it's not a brilliant trick or anything, but I'll show you the trick. So that will go in here when it's all said and done. That'll go on the inside of this. Then one of the two panels, the back panel, will be glued here. Remember, my pages are going to be in here. And then the cover piece is going to go right here like this okay so there's four of the pieces and they'll be glued together and the pages will be inside and then this back piece and I again don't know which one I'm going to use will go will tuck around the back of the spine and in right here in these panels and then you have the option of gluing this down all the way and then just having a regular cover or you can glue top edge bottom and then this will be a tuck spot and I'll show you what I mean but this is the basic construction the five pieces needed to make this type of cover and spine you are not going to glue this piece in or down until after you have put your signatures in here okay and I'll go over that before we put the signatures in. But basically, this is a signature insert. I'm going to sew my signatures in here. And I tend, because I make, oh, I put my ruler somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, here we go. Because I make my signatures kind of fat, I am going to use about 60 pages, or not 60 pages. I am going to use about 15 pages, which will give me 60 working pieces, essentially. This is a two and a half inch spine. Oh, just shy of two and a half, and I'll explain why in just a minute. And then so when I center this, right, when I center it, I am going to have a, one signature here, and then a half inch out, I'm going to have a second signature, and a half inch out on the other side, I'm going to have a third, and then a half inch out on this side, a fourth, and a half inch side out on this a fifth. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five signatures with a little bit of a gap, just roughly a quarter of an inch, and a little bit of a gap, roughly a quarter of an inch on each set, side, which will sit in here. So I'm going to have my five signatures in here. This will sit inside this frame, right? This will sit inside this frame, and then the front cover will sit around it here. So where this flap edge is, that'll be completely covered by the front and inside cover. And then this, this edge, this flap where my signature piece went in, this will be completely covered by the back piece, just like that. So there's those four pieces. And then because I put a piece of card chipboard here just to make it sturdier, I will do my spine wrap. I'll put this around my spine and tuck it in. And that will be my journal. Now, how am I going to close this one? I have kind of debated that because a lot of times I just use a lace tie or something or sorry silk or whatever. And I don't know that I want to do that on this one simply because the front cover is so decorated. But I still may do it. I also may do something like this. Now, this is a different type of a cover, different type of assembly. I've got an inner panel and an outer panel around chipboard, but I was able to put some heavy duty tabs in here and then I sewed this cover on. And so 
again, it's black, so it's really hard to see. So my closure here is tabs that stand out a little bit. I don't know how well you can see those, but there's tabs. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to close it, but I have options. And it's certainly not a decision I have to make right now. Right now, I'm going to show you the dimensions and how I cut this. I'm not showing you with this because the black is really difficult to see and I recognize that. So you can choose to use file folders to do this step or you can choose to use 12 by 12 paper or you can use some of your collage sheets if you want to. That part's completely up to you. Um, I wouldn't recommend single-sided scrapbook paper for this because it truly is not durable enough. So keep that in mind as you're selecting your papers. Okay. I'm going to move that to the side and I'm going to pull out just some, this is not super thick. This is just 12 by 12 craft cardstock. And this isn't even a super heavy weight. We can beef it up with what we put on top of it. So we can add extra pieces. We can use chipboard as a base or as a, a filler. We can add layers of paper and stuff so we can make it sturdier. But one of the reasons I chose this is because sometimes the really heavy cardstock or baseboard stock, it will, when you score it, it can cause this, the score line to tear a little bit and you don't want that to happen. So I just grabbed what I had. You could also, here's some file folders. I could use file folders and do this and heck, maybe I'll even do file folders because honestly, this, the fold line is already in here and it's not going to show so it doesn't matter. You choose 12 by 12 file folders. I also have these document wallets. Don't remember what they're from, but these will work as well because it's got the fold. It's got the sizes I need. I don't need to have this front or back piece. I can just cut it off. So maybe I'll use these uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It honestly doesn't matter. Um, I think just to see it, I think this file folder might show up the best on camera so I'm gonna grab that that's that's my reasoning for it all right so I've got a couple file folders here two or three I honestly don't know which one which how much you need but something all right the dimensions and I will put these dimensions you don't have to take a screenshot of this unless you really want to I will put the dimensions in the description box I know we haven't done anything and I've talked but I wanted to set you up so you knew you could make informed choices uh, two 12 by 12 sheets or two to three file folders. So I've got a couple file folders. The first piece I'm going to do is the insert sheet. That is the one that's going to be my base is what I would call it. And I, and I've got a little basic, basic diagram down there to show you. It is five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to cut my first file folder at five and a half inches tall. And this is just a folded over file folder. And when I cut this, I'm leaving it folded. If I had 12 by 12 paper, I, would, um, I wouldn't have it folded, obviously. So this is already, you know what? I'm not going to do the file folder simply because this is already folded. And it, you don't have to do the scoring. So if you don't have a scoreboard, this might be a great one because it's already scored for you. Um, so... I changed my mind. I'm going to use this and I just hope it shows up well enough. Okay, so I need to cut it to five and a half inches tall. Height. The height of this book is, the height of the book is five and three quarter, but this insert piece I'm going to cut to five and a half and I'll show you why. All right, and if you don't have a paper trimmer, no problem. You can use a ruler and a straight edge and a cutting mat. I just use this for the sake of ease. Okay, so this is that the height of this is going to be five and a half inches. Then, let's see. Okay, so this is 12 inches wide, right? Five and a half inches by 12 inches wide. And that's the dimension I'm going to use. Now these, Corey, this isn't 12 inches wide, right? But it's more than 12 inches wide when you've got this score. So if you're using a file folder, you've already got your first score. You're golden. You just have to decide where your second score is, right? Because file folders already got one of them for you. And so you would cut it five and a half inches again. And or, yeah, five and a half inches for the height. 
and then you've got your first score and we're going to score now so you're going to would do your second score okay so if you're using file folder it's only slightly different five and a half inches high they're the height of the journal now i'm going to score on the left hand side at four and three quarters so four and three quarters and I'm using a small scoreboard just because of the smaller size, but you can use a large scoreboard, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna flip it around 180 and I'm gonna score it again at four and three quarters. All right, so if you can see that four and three quarters, four and three quarters, that means this center pa panel, this center piece is two and a half inches. So four and three quarters, four and three quarters, two and a half, and that gives me my 12 inch piece. And then you just fold them over. Now you saw on the one that I had, and I moved it to the side to get it out of the way, because you can see this is really flimsy. I cut a piece of chipboard slightly smaller. So just shy of five and a half and just shy of two and a half. And then I glued that onto the paper just so I could make sure my spine was a little sturdier because this is, this is thin, very, very flimsy. And this is my base basically okay so that's the first piece all right the now i need to make the two right and left panels they're going to be the front cover in the inside page and the back cover in the inside page okay again with a file folder you've already got this in place so you're golden all you have to do is is cut once you don't have to score but since we're using this cardstock i need to cut five and three quarter inch height. Yes, it is a quarter inch taller, and I'll show you why in a little bit. You don't have to do that, but I just find it gives a better finished project. So I want this to be five and three quarters, and I'm using that same piece of 12 by 12 paper. So I want five and three quarters this time. And I'm lining it up, five and three quarters. All right, and I need two of these that's one panel and now I need five and three quarters for the other panel and this is 12 by 12 so I don't have to measure which is which and so I want five and three quarters for the second panel so front cover back cover basically front and inside back and outside I guess all right then I score those at five inches so I'm going to score this at five inches and I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to score this at five inches. If you're using directional paper, you are going to want to be very careful because remember, one of these is going to be the right, one of these is going to be the left and you're, you don't want something to be upside down. These are solid cardstock, so it doesn't matter, but be mindful if you're using directional paper. All right, so I've scored each one at five inches. Now you have a choice, because I'm a big fan of options. So now I'm gonna have to find where I put that. Oh, here it is. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay. When I created this, so this is, this is essentially this panel, right? This is this piece. When I created this, I wanted, and here, is the panel that we're making now the, the back the two side panels the front and back panels right I did it like this now if you look right here there is a quarter inch difference they are not the same you can make them exactly the same or you can do what I did and give the quarter inch it just depends on what how you want to do it both work identically the difference is this if you have a quarter inch difference between your inside piece and your front cover or your inside piece and your back cover, if you choose to have the quarter inch, this is what it's for. So I'm gonna lay, this is my base, or I'll put it on this one, it might make it easier to see. This is my base. I want to lay this in. You'll see that the inside piece goes right to the edge and the outside piece is a quarter of an inch shorter, basically. So when I've got this as my spine, right, 
the inside piece goes all the way to the end, but the outside piece doesn't. And that is because I wanted to put a panel. I want to put the panel on here. And I like to make this a tuck. And when it goes all the way to the end, it's really difficult to see that it's a tuck. So I'll glue down or sew down the top, the edge that's the opening and the bottom, the spine will be closed. And then I'll glue down or sew down three sides. And then I can tuck a card or journaling card or something inside here. I did that on the wildflower journal. So if you look at that video, you'll see what I mean. If I wanted just to glue the whole thing down, then I could cut these front and back panels to be the exact same size. Both would be five inches. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, it just gives you a choice. And if it doesn't make sense, I apologize. So you can see this one is about four and three quarters. And this one is five. I just took off a quarter inch here to give us this profile. You can see on the front cover this little bit of pattern. I wanted that to show because I wanted it to be obvious that it was a tuck. If you don't want to make it a tuck, make both pieces five inches. Either way works just as well. It won't change the function of it at all. It will simply change how the cover looks a little bit. Okay, I hope that made sense. It made sense to me, but I made this, so maybe, maybe I'm crazy. All right, so I scored this at five. This is going to be my inside piece. If I wanted to be then the same, I would fold it over and I would just cut off this extra inch. Actually, it would be two inches, excuse me. I'd cut off this extra two inches, an inch on each edge, right? If I wanted this to fit exactly like this, flush and flush, I would cut it at five inches. Cut it right there, okay? I didn't, I didn't mean that right. I didn't say that right. Cut it, not cut it at five inches. I scored it at five inches, so the total width is five inches. My total length on this one, if it was open, would be 10 inches. So if I want them to be flush, five inches scored, five inches. If I don't want them if I, to be flush, if I want this to be offset, I'm gonna take one side and cut off just a quarter of an inch. I'm going to cut off just a quarter of an inch and now you can see they're different. And when I line this up here, when I put my spine on the back, there's going to be a little bit of an overlap. Like I said, either way works just fine. It's just a matter of what you prefer. I feel like I'm killing this to death and saying it ad nauseum, but I'm trying really hard to make it clear as to um, what what your options are. I just it's personalizable, person personalizable. Yeah, that's what it is. So that you can make it a you know the journal cover that you want. And now I'm gonna because I cut the other one a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut this one. I'm gonna cut a quarter of an inch off this edge because I like that little tuck spot, basically. So now we've got three pieces cut. We've got the panel that's our spine. We've got the front and inside cover. We've got the back and outside cover. And again, if you're using directional paper, you want the longer or the five inch side, five inch pieces up like this, okay? So that's gonna be the construction here. I really hope that makes sense. Okay, so we've done three of the five. Now I'm gonna do the outer spine. Let's say I'm gonna cover this, I'm gonna cover this whole thing because I want a different pattern. And that's really the reasoning for it, I because I wanted a different material or pattern. If you look at the Wildflower Journal video, um, I used green file folders for the cover and then I used one of those Tim Holtz baseboards in a different, completely different color for the back. And I really liked that different pop of color that allowed the cover, the spine, and the back color, back cover to be. So the spine had a completely different 
pattern than the front and back covers. And I thought that was kind of cool. It was a, a kind of a cool effect, which is why I did it. Okay, now we're going to cut the piece that goes on here, right? The piece that's going to wrap around because this is just our base. And that one, like this one here, is going to be five and three quarters. So we want a piece, I've got my directions here. We want another piece that is five and three quarters. So I want this one to be five and three quarters. For the height and this one is going to be four and a half inches wide so five and three quarters by four and a half inches wide all right and this one is going to go on the outside so i am going to score this piece making sure i've got my long my height is five and three quarters so i want to score on the vertical line. I'm gonna score it at one inch. So, this is supposed to be four and a half. Five and three quarters, yeah, by four and a half. But I didn't do four and a half. Look, you can see I did four and three quarters. So this should be four and a half. I'm gonna take another quarter inch off. I'm glad I saw that. This is supposed to be four and a half inches. Five and three quarters, four and a half. And in fact, let's do this. Five and three quarters height, four and a half inches length. So four and a half, five and three quarters. This is five inches. This is, is that five inches? It's four and three quarters inches. So glad I checked. This is four and three quarters, and I would have known that if I looked at my measurements. Four and three quarters, two and a half inches, four and three quarters, if that helps. I don't know if it does or not. So this is the insert piece, the base that I'm building on. Four and three quarters, two and a half, four and three quarters. And because I made mine slightly different, this piece is five inches, and this piece is four and three quarters inches, and the height is five and three quarters length and five and three quarters those didn't change okay so this is the front cover and this whole thing is five and a half yes this is a quarter inch shorter okay base front cover just, gonna go just like that back cover same thing five and three quarters. Oh, I did it upside down. Okay, let's try that again. Five and three quarters height, four and three quarters. Outside, yeah, I did do it right the first time. So four and three quarters, five and three quarters height, four and three quarters length, five inch length. Okay, like that. So here, again, like this. I hope that helped a little bit. All right. Now I am putting this piece. I'm cutting this piece. And that is five and three quarters height by four and a half inches wide length. Okay. Or I should say width, length, width, whatever. Across. I'm going to score it at one inch. Sorry if that sounded snarky. I truly didn't mean it to and I'm gonna score it at one inch. I flipped it around, so I scored vertically one inch, flipped it around, scored it one inch vertically. Now some people will just measure along their board, but I find the measurements get just a little bit off. I have much better luck if I flip them around. If, you're, if you don't have that issue, then you certainly don't have to flip it around, but I just have better luck. So this is gonna be my spine cover. Okay, so here's my bases, my base. And then I'm going to put this piece right here. This is going to cover the spine. This would be a contrasting pattern or color or what have you. All right, so I've got it just like this. The only other piece I need to make 
is the inside where I'm going to sew in my signatures. I'm not going to glue this yet or put it together yet, obviously, because I need to put my signatures in here. Now, if you want to, you can sew your signatures directly in here. That's not a problem. I generally don't. I, this is where I put my chipboard. This is where I put my base. This gives me a solid construction. I have a better luck lining everything up when I do it this way, just for this particular type journal. Now there's lots of different types of journals and lots of different ways to do it, but that's, but that's how I choose to do it with this. And I've had the best luck that way. And so we've got four pieces so far. You know what? I'm just going to grab a couple clips to make it stay together. So it makes sense. I should have thought of that sooner. Backwards. There we go. Because I want the longer piece on the inside so that it touch, tucks right up to the edge of my fold or my crease. So it's going to essentially look something like this. All right. So we've got our spine cover, front and inside piece, back and inside piece, and our base. Now the piece we need to make now goes right in here for our spine. And I do this one slightly different, just slightly. I still need the five and three quarters height, right? It needs to be five, I think that's five and three quarters. I want my height to be five and three quarters. And I want my width to be four and a half, just like the outside spine cover. So I'm gonna cut this off at four and a half. And again, this is gonna be my spine insert. There's one difference. The outside of my spine, my spine cover, I scored it with an exactly two and a half inch wrap, basically, because I want that to fit snugly up against it. If I did that in here, it would buckle a little bit. So when I am scoring the inside, I do it just a slight bit different. I score it at one inch, again, on the vertical line, and then I flip it around and I move it, okay? And I move it so that it's lined up with the one. I don't want the inside to be exactly two and a half inches because that'll make it snug and that'll make it buckle a little bit. So what I do is I line this right up at the one and then I push it over until it's not quite in the seven eighths inch mark. It's not quite in that line. And then I score at one inch plus that little itty bitty bit. So th basically this is just a smidge, not even an eighth of an inch wider than one. So it's just slightly wider than one. And if you were to look at it, you'd be kind of like, well, they're the same, but they're not. This is just slightly wider. And that means this inside piece is just slightly smaller than two and a half inches. And the reason I do that is this. When I put this piece in here with the signature sewn in, because of the layers of paper, it just fits more smoothly. So let's take this outside piece off. So this is going to eventually have my signature sewn in. Once the signatures are sewn in, I'm going to assemble the whole thing. And you can just see it just fits a lot more smoothly by giving it that little bit smaller profile. I guess is a good way to put it. A little bit smaller dimension. All right. So it's going to be like this. You know what I really should have done if I'd been planning this? I should have used different colors for each piece so it would have been easier to see. So my apologies for that. Should have thought that through more. And that is what it's going to look like. There are your five pieces. The base unit, the front cover with the inside cover, the back cover with the inside piece, right? So if these were file folders, they'd just already be scored. The signature insert and the spine cover. So those are the five pieces. I really hope that was clear. I apologize if it's not. Please feel free to ask any questions and I'll try to clarify it 
I, like I said, I probably did it ad nauseum, but I really wanted to make it clear and let you know that you have choices and options with this. And there you go. I'm hoping tomorrow to be able to make another video showing you the signatures. And what I do, again, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, or maybe, I don't know if I did or not. I apologize if I did. Tomorrow, I'm hoping to show the signatures. And I am going to do five signatures. And I, sh I did show that with the, I make the signatures a half an inch apart. A lot of times I'll make them a quarter an inch apart, but because these some of these are going to be chubbier with a, um, a one sheet wonder, I'm going to do them at half an inch apart. And I generally, personal preference, do three to four pieces of paper per signature. And when I see pieces of paper, like this would be a piece of paper. And what am I going to put in there for the signatures? I have no idea. I just grabbed a bunch of different paper that I might want to include. Let's see, there's ledger and lined paper and sheet music and a digital image and graphing paper. It looks like handmade paper, straw. Well, this was something I found at a yard sale. It's a child's um, practicing, practice writing book. Some cardstock, some different lined paper, tracing paper, coffee dyed tracing paper, I don't know, paper, uh, handmade paper, coffee dyed paper, a couple different kinds, lined paper, different ledger, different ledger, coffee dyed. Um, oh, here's a bookmark. And some paper on onion skin, map. Maybe a doily, different ledger altogether. The color, these hearts were these, so maybe I'll put these in as an insert. Don't know. Here's some braille paper, uh, different matte paper. These are some double pockets that I made, and I might put lace on these. I'd made these a long time ago. And they're just two pieces laid over each other, so each one has kind of a pocket. But I could put a piece of lace on there and make another pocket. Don't know if I will. Looks like some maybe dictionary page, or this looks like an index, actually. And so obviously I would, I don't ever put pages in sideways. That's just not my thing. I don't know why. It just bugs me. But actually, this one doesn't look bad. So maybe I'll do it that way. Or I could, these are really old. I may line them with something else and then just cobble the seam together, put tape or fabric or something to make that sturdier. I'm not sure. Um, looks like some vintage ledger from 1947, maybe an envelope, a receipt, tax record. I'm not sure. I just grabbed a bunch of stuff, the old uh, mach copy machine paper back when it was, you know, they spun it around. Uh, a ledger, dictionary, this looks like it's um, multimedia paper of some sort, some more different kinds of lined paper. I just grabbed a bunch of everything, basically, as you can tell. Um, this is that stone paper. This stuff doesn't tear. It is the coolest textured stuff ever. If you get a chance to use some stone paper, it's, it's hard like vellum, but it's very non-porous. I guess that's the best way to put it. Seriously cool. So oh, here you go. Here is a piece of just um, collaged paper. Um, these are some of the Tim Holtz backdrops and some 12 by 12 pieces. And I don't know, honestly, which of these I'm going to use for the one sheet wonder for these. Uh, looks like some thin cardstock. Uh, I'm not even sure. This is just a piece of 12 by 12. The ledger are the one sheet wonders are double sided. You pretty much want non directional double sided paper for these just because of the way the way they fold. They fold in all different kinds of directions. Tim Holtz paper is absolutely fabulous for this, but if you don't have it, use something else. But I highly recommend cardstock, double sided, non directional if you've got it. Maybe I'll use that. Maybe, oh, here you go. This is sort of directional, but not really. Maybe I'll use this for a one sheet wonder. I don't know. I've got a couple of different kinds of paper. See, here's single sided. So I wouldn't, oh man, mustard moon, 2004. Honestly, dating myself here 20 years ago. Ladies at mustard moon, wonderful, wonderful people. It's been out of business forever, but there you go. I've had that paper clearly for a while. Um, double sided paper. Maybe I would do it sideways. I'm not sure. This side is non-directional, but this side is. Cardstock. You can use cardstock for a one sheet wonder. It's absolutely fine. And that's not directional. Here, just because I liked the red, and this is non-directional, so maybe that'll make a good one sheet wonder. 
Um, here, oh, this one would make a great one sheet wonder. Definitely we'll use this for one of the one sheet wonders. In fact, I liked it so much I had two pieces. And this is just embossed cardstock. I don't even remember who this is. Oh, yes, I do. K and Company. Does it have the year on it? I don't know. It might even be before 2000. 12 by 12 embossed paper. Doesn't have the year, but it's old. I've had this for a long time. And then I grabbed some of that. Uh, if you watched a previous video, I got that really big botanical book at the Great Junk Hunt. And I've got some flowers and such with red. So those might make a great page. No, obviously I am not going to put all of that in my journal. I make pages that are way too fat to use, include all of that. But I have some options. So when I start laying the pieces out for this signature before I sew them in, I've at least got some choices and I can decide, you know, what styles, patterns, mixture, and such that I want. I didn't put any envelopes in there, so maybe I'll put an envelope. Not quite sure. I almost blew it. Okay, I've had it on my desk forever because I've been meaning to do it. Somebody asked me how to show or share how I put something through the laminator, what I mean by that when I'm taking, they're like, this is basic Tim Holtz ephemera or Tim Holtz layers. I'm not sure which package these came from. Honestly, these are, you know, they're white on one side. Well, this isn't, I don't even know where that came from. But I, Tim Holtz ephemera or any ephemera, this is just a vintage piece and I back it and I use the laminator to back it and I'll show you how she, somebody asked that I show that so I'm going to show it. And no, it's just a little too small, darn it. What I generally do to do this is I grab my scrap bin, my bin, well I have lots of scrap bins, but my bin of scrap um, coffee dyed paper, you know, solid thinner paper. I've got some tracing paper here. I've got some linen paper. I've got some of this yellowy paper, lined paper, whatever. I just grab my bin of paper. Could even use this, whatever. And then, well, oh, there's a little mini notepad. Okay, oh gosh, see, things get, oh, look at there, there's a journaling card. Okay, move those up there, Corey. So I've got the paper here. And I'll usually try to grab the smallest scraps, but not always. And then, okay, here we go. That works great. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I grab a bunch of these and I'll just use this one simply because it's right here. And I do them all the same way. This is something that printed in error. So I'm going to put glue stick on the back of white on white. I know this is the ephemera piece, the Tim Holtz layer. I'm going to put glue stick on the back and I'm pretty generous with it. I don't make it glob, but I try to get all of the surface. That's part of the key. I try to get all of the surface with the glue stick. Okay. Then I move this and this because there's glue globbers on there. And then I'm going to lay this down on my scrap of coffee dyed paper. Okay, just lay it down like so. Now, I generally, I this is um, an ice scraper for a window. Um, you don't have to use it. Some people use card. I just like this. On C, here, oh, it didn't completely, let's go with plan B. You can see I didn't look at the back of that paper. That's note to self, note to you. Make sure you're looking at all of the papers so that you get a place that you actually want to journal on. Because if this is going to be a journal card, I want to actually be able to write on that. And that looked sloppy, like I probably held it right here and didn't get it all the way coffee dyed. So I'm going to move that and I'll just put this down right here because, yeah, that looks good. All right, and then I run this over just to make sure there's no air bubbles. And because there's glue on this because I was a dork, and didn't look first, I'll trim it off. Most of the time I don't trim this off until after I've gone through my laminator, but in this case, I'm gonna trim it off before, just because it's got glue on it. Okay, and so just like this, I'm gonna run it through my laminator, and I'll bring the laminator up here. Now, I have two. I have an Amazon Basics laminator and this Scotch. It's just for an eight and a half by 11. It's, I don't know what it costs, under 20 bucks, whatever it was. It was not a spendy item at all. This particular one has a three milliliter or a five milliliter. So if I'm doing something a little bit thicker, I'll push the five and you can see that lights up. This one, 
and you can purchase these on Amazon or um, anywhere. Ma Walmart has these. And it's been heated, so it's, well, it doesn't say ready because I moved it around, but it is ready, and usually that ready light lights up. And all I do is, there's nothing on it, it's just the paper and the layer, the Tim Holtz layer or ephemera bit or whatever. And I run it right through. Now, if it's really tiny, I know that sometimes people say they run around the spool in there. And you can feed it with something else if you want. Put it in a piece of uh, copy paper or something like that. And I run it through just like that. And that makes sure what it does is it re the heat, because this is a heated one, it reactivates the glue. So if I didn't press down evenly somewhere, it the pressure from the wheel and the the glue, it reactivates the glue and it spreads it just enough that I don't get the bubbles because I don't care for bubbles. Some people don't mind them and that's fine if you don't, if you're okay with it, but I don't like the bubbles. So this gives me a really smooth profile when I'm backing a piece of ephemera. When I was talking about something to do when you're just, your creativity is absolutely gone, but you want to create, you can just put backs on these, on these cards, on these ephemera bits. And it's pretty sturdy. I mean, I could make it lift if I wanted to. It's just glue stick, but it's very sturdy and it's going to do exactly what I want it to do. So that is how I use my laminator to adhere the fronts to the backs of these. Okay, boy, I have talked nonstop and I apologize if this wasn't clear or if I, um, if I confused you, but my intent was to be clear and uh, make the directions understandable. So if there's something that's not understandable, please ask. I will do my best to answer it in the next couple days. And again, and tomorrow or the next day, I'm hoping to do the signatures inserted. And then by Friday, we can start doing our mass make and decorating the pages. That's the thought. Thank you very much for watching, for your kindness, and for your support. Take care and happy creating.